Welcome to Electron Online. Now let's take a little closer look at what a partial derivative will look like when we're trying to express the change of state from state 1 to state 2. In this case, we're going to keep the pressure constant. So there's only a variation in the volume and in the temperature. Now, notice that there's a line here that represents a change in volume and temperature as we continue from one state to the next. We pick two specific points, two specific states, we call this state 1 and state 2. So in state 1 we have a specific temperature, I guess we can call this T1 and P, oh, not P1 because this is volume, volume 1 and at the different state this is temperature T2 and volume V2. So you can see that there's been a change in the volume from V1 to V2 and a change in the temperature from T1 to T2 as we go from state 1 to state 2 realizing of course that the pressure remains constant. Now you can see that we can draw a line between state 1 and state 2, a straight line. We call that the chord and the slope of the chord is simply the change in the volume divided by the change in the temperature, again indicating that the pressure remains constant. Now if we pick a tangent line right at state 1 and we express the slope of that tangent line we can see that that would then be expressed in terms of the partial derivative, the change in the volume with respect to time keeping the pressure constant. In other words, it's the change in the volume over time right at that point, it's the slope right at that state. And then if we project that, that tangent line out between T1 and T2, we can then see that this represents the change in volume as a function of time, uh, the change of volume as a function of temperature, keeping the pressure constant. Now what happens when we bring the two points closer and closer and closer together, reducing the change in the temperature, keeping the pressure constant? What happens when those two points get closer together? Well, in the limit, when the change in the temperature approaches zero, then the ratio or the slope of the chord will then approach the slope of the tangent point at point 1 or in that case also the tangent point at point 2 bringing the two points close enough together and so therefore in the limit when the change in the temperature goes to 0 of the ratio of the change in the volume divided by the change in the temperature again that's the slope of the chord in the limit that will equal the partial derivative of the change in the volume divided by or as a function of the change in the temperature or I should say the change in the volume with respect to the temperature keeping the pressure constant. If we now go to the equation of the ideal gas, PV equals nRT, and when we solve this for V in terms of T, nR over P then simply becomes a constant. If we now take the partial derivative of the volume with respect to the temperature keeping the pressure constant, this simply then becomes nR over P, and so this is then our first derivative going from one state to the next state where we can express the change in the volume with respect to the temperature keeping the pressure constant simply will equal to nR over P and so that will be the case in any state change going from 1 to 2 as long as it's isobaric, constant pressure and as long as only the volume and the temperature can change. So there you go, that's our first introduction to one of the partial derivatives We'll see some more of that, and then later on we'll see some examples of how to actually apply it. But at this point, this is how we find the equivalent of every one of the partial derivatives when the volume changes, the pressure changes, the temperature changes, keeping one of the others the same. In this case, pressure is constant, the volume changes as a function, or the volume changes with respect to the appropriate temperature change. And that's how it's done.